and I expect that there will be some people named in these lawsuits that will raise some eyebrows. How big an eyebrow raise are we talking about? I mean, are we talking about names as big as Diddy, potentially? These are crimes that are so serious that it would likely uh, leave uh, Sean Combs in jail the rest of his life, or nearly for the rest of his life. I think Damn. he has an out option, and that is popping a cyanide pill. If he no, wanted choke. to kill himself, yeah. he would have been dead already. But no, choke, but choke, I mean, you might have said the same thing about Jeffrey Epstein. Well, well you, you didn't wait for the best part yet. He's going to be indicted for the murder of Tupac in the notorious B.I.G. The shocking allegations leveled at Sean Diddy Combs have burst the floodgates on salacious claims about an industry many people believe harbored a monster. Understandably, the internet's ablaze with claims about these events and whether other powerful figures were involved too. Well, last week I interviewed Jaguar Wright, a singer-songwriter who's made claims about Diddy for years. Those claims had already received a lot of attention in the media across many platforms for many years. And that's the thing about platforms. The reality of the modern world is that pretty much everyone has a platform as long as they have something to say that other people want to hear. That's why we invited her on to be interviewed. The people making these claims have an audience with or without shows like mine. Well, Jay, you were right, unexpectedly made several serious allegations about Jay-Z and Beyonce during that interview. As I said in the moment, they were not present to respond or defend themselves. But now they have. Their lawyers contacted us to say that those claims were totally false and have no basis in fact. And we've therefore complied with a legal request to cut them from the original interview. Editing, editing interviews is not something we do lightly at a show called Uncensored. Uh, but, like the proverbial cries of fire in a crowded theatre, there are legal limits on us too. And we apologise to Jay-Z and Beyonce. So the show is called Uncensored unless some lawyer makes some baseless claim or whatever it is, yeah, and all of a sudden it's uh, Pierce Morgan censored. You see, so this is the power that all these celebrities have, right? You never know what's happening behind closed doors. You never know the stuff that goes on. Especially with high uh, profile people like Beyonce and Jay-Z, right? So you have all this drama about P. Diddy unfolding just before our own eyes. And I feel like there's a huge change brewing within uh, the entertainment industry across the globe, actually. Well, now Sean Diddy Combs is reportedly putting together an O.J. Simpson-style legal dream team to defend federal charges on sexual assault, sex trafficking and racketeering. It certainly looks Damn. like he's going to need all the legal help he can get. Well, last week, Houston attorney Tony Busby held a bombshell press conference to announce he's representing 120 alleged victims of the rap mogul, during which he gave new and disturbing details. When you talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. Oh my God, uh oh, oh. This guy is not gonna see the light of day ever again. Either he's gonna end up in prison for the rest of his life or uh, he's not gonna see a day in prison either because he's gonna be long gone by the time he actually serves time in prison. Wow. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. Oh. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs in these cases yeah. were minors at the time of the acts complained of. In a moment, my panel will dissect and debate all of the latest developments, shocking developments. But first, I'm joined by attorney Tony Busby, who you just heard speaking there. Mr. Busby, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I want to read you a statement overnight from Janice Smalls Combs, who is Diddy's mother. Uh, and uh, it came by her lawyer, Natalie Figures. It says this, I come to you today as a mother that is devastated and profoundly saddened by the allegations made against my son, Sean Combs. It is heartbreaking to see my son judged not for the truth, but for a narrative created out of lies. To bear witness what seems to be like a public lynching of my son before he's had the opportunity to prove his innocence is a pain too unbearable to put into words. Just first of all, your reaction to that statement from his mother. My reaction as a viewer is, of course, the mother is gonna take the son's side, of course. Even though it's so obvious, especially after that uh, video, of him with his uh, former wife in the hotel lobby. It's like a guy that behaves like that in public and is gonna do that to his wife in public in a hotel lobby. Who knows what he's gonna do behind closed doors. And the rumors have been going on for years, especially like within high profile people. It's like there's no party like a Diddy party. 
It's like, okay, what does that mean exactly? It's like, yeah, of course, it's gonna escalate and it's gonna escalate and throughout the years you're gonna have a party within a party. So of course you're gonna have extra stuff happening. Now, people doing freaky stuff behind closed doors, it's, it's, it is what it is, yeah, whatever. But when you drug people without their consent, when you have minors or when you trap people to advance their career, oh yeah, you want to advance your career, you want to have that deal, yeah, come to a party and uh, just let us do stuff to you. So of course it's gonna be soul crushing for anyone that's caught up in that environment. That's exactly what I would expect a mother to say, you know, these allegations are Obviously. shocking. Um, these allegations are egregious, uh, and that's why they have court systems, because we will ferret this out in the court system. Uh, we intend to prove our cases. Uh, obviously, we're not going to prove our cases at a press conference. And, you know, uh, with all due respect to her, you know, I've talked to these victims and uh, I believe them. So uh, that's exactly what I would expect his mother to say. Your hotline took 12,000 calls in 24 hours. Wow. including many new allegations involving minors. Uh, at the moment, there's no class action. Each case you take will be represented individually, but just the fact you've got 120 already that you're repping, and you're getting so many calls, what does that tell you about the scale of all this? Well, you know, I, I know that's reported 12,000 calls in a 24-hour period, and of course that's true. I, I want people to know that that, you know, obviously that's not 12,000 people claiming to be victimized by Sean Combs. That's, you know, a, a large portion of those people calling are calling with, you know, words of support. Others were prank calls and crank calls, as you might imagine, in this kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, what's most interesting to me and what's most helpful are people that call that have bits of information, bits of evidence, uh, video, perhaps pictures. And then, of course, we're particularly interested in in people that that had interaction with Mr. Combs and, and what they say happened to them and victims. But, um, you know, I was trying to get my head around the fact that, you know, we're talking about thousands of people calling and hundreds of alleged victims. And how could that possibly be the case? But, you know, when you put that in context and you think about conduct that allegedly occurred over a 25 year period uh, in multiple different venues, parties every week, sometimes multiple times a week, and the same MO each time has been alleged. Uh, typically, it involves some sort of uh, illicit substance placed in someone's drink, and then that individual is coerced uh, or taken advantage of. And that's kind of the, the, the overarching theme here. And so a lot of these calls, you know, on first glance, you say, my goodness, that's just impossible that that many people would call uh, with information or been who have been victimized. But when you look at it, uh, in the context of, of a long period of time and a, and a particular uh, modus operandi, uh, it makes a lot of sense. What I've seen in, uh, in England, in London, in America as well, Germany, southern Spain, some places in Italy, right? At a party, yeah, you're gonna be drinking a lot of alcohol. Now, the parties get bigger and bigger, crazier and crazier, and the fact that someone slipped you a drink how it's really hard to prove that someone slipped it and you didn't take it yourself because these parties get crazier and crazier right so you as a victim let's say you are a victim right how are you gonna prove that someone actually put that in your drink and you didn't do it yourself there's no cctv as far as i'm aware maybe some people filmed it and all that stuff but it's gonna be really really hard to prove and that's why all these monsters yeah it, besides Didi, they were able to get away with it because at the party people get freaky anyway. So the fact that someone slipped something in your drink and then you were coerced into doing some sexual stuff that you didn't really feel comfortable doing even though you were intoxicated, that's predatory behavior. That's something that's definitely liable in a court of law and you know, so I don't know. We'll have to see how it unfolds but for now it's just, it, it is really just wow. It's a, it's, numbers are staggering. Um, you've also said that there are other big names that will come out in relation to these charges. He says the day will come, you said this, when you start naming names. When will that day be and how big are these names that we're talking about? 
I'm pretty sure Beyonce and Jay-Z and DiCaprio and especially Beyonce and Jay-Z because they were the ones that censored and they were sending their lawyers. Yeah, I'm sure they've done some stuff that they're not really proud of. Uh, at least they were getting like really freaky. I don't know if they had some people that were doing some stuff or whatever, but wow. Yeah, you know, people are very interested in, in that, of course. Uh, that comment has been repeated back to me, as you might imagine, many times. Uh, and people are, you know, waited, waiting with bated breath, hoping that, you know, I'm going to name, name these big celebrity names. But I, I can tell you this. I look at it in this context. If you attended one of these events, and we're talking about, you know, we've heard about the white party and the freak offs and the after parties, but there's also, you know, impromptu parties at uh, studios, after parties from, from uh, concerts, album release parties, hotel parties. I mean, the list goes on and on. But in my view, if you attended those and you saw or knew that somebody was being given uh, drugs, that their drinks were being drugged, and you sat by and either participated in some of this, this activity or encouraged this activity or allowed it to go on and helped cover it up, or were in the room while it was happening and said nothing and did not intervene and perhaps attended more of these parties knowing that this type of conduct was going to occur. It's my view, that may not be the, the criminal justice system's view, but it's certainly my view that you're complicit. Yes, they are complicit and they will be named and shamed in the upcoming trials which are gonna be devastating i'm assuming uh subscribe and stick around if you want to see more thank you